Welcome everybody, this is Lucy. I am going to be diving into a video uh, to showcase the casework and millwork, um, which I call the same thing. I call casework millwork, millwork casework, we'll get into that, um, in our generic AutoCAD floor plan. Um, I do have um, two handouts up. Um, one, uh, both I've shared with you in print and are on Canvas for you to download. Uh, for those of you guys that do not have these handouts, uh, do not worry. I'm going to probably be popping them up every once in a while. Um, one is very rough and loose and I've shown in the last couple videos. Uh, the other one is a little bit more uh, precise, uh, drawn of course in AutoCAD and referenced in AutoCAD with some dimensions. Um, but we're going to dive right in. Okay, so when you are working with a floor plan, something that you've sketched, or loose or you know somebody else has sketched and you're redrawing it uh, what i try to always think about are um is the shape uh where we're going um uh, the shape for us are rectilinear uh, there's a there is a curved wall of course that will be curvilinear but to start off with i can probably use a couple objects that I already have drawn. So this line here, that's part of a wall, I can use that to possibly use my offset command uh, to begin to lay out uh, the casework, if you will. And what I mean by that is if you look at this floor plan at the top here where the dimensions are, immediately there is up north this five foot dimension from the interior face of that wall to where this curvilinear uh, arced wall, if you will, stands. It's a partial height wall. If you want to see more detail about this <coughs> in elevation or in section, then we could look at the elevation and section view, but I'm just wanting to focus in on the floor plan first. So with that said, in AutoCAD, uh, one of the first things I'm going to do is just offset this line five feet. So I'm going to take it, I'm going to give it a distance of five feet, and I am going to, of course, it's asking me in the offset command what side. I'm always building south. I, I always start building from the very north, which is that north wall right there, and then I just basically build south, just a habit of mine. Um, however, before I go any further, which what I mean by that is, again, if you look, that has listed and shown now uh, the marker to where the start, or I should say the midpoint of that arc wall is. But then I have a cantilever shelf, I have space, and I have a desk drawn. However, in the other handout that I gave you, I gave you a distance here of 14 foot 3 inches for that cantilever shelf. Um, it might not remain that, to be honest, um, but literally it is kind of a reference. And so I would like to use that dimension. So. Right now, because I offset, uh, this line is represented on the wall layer. I'm going to change my layer really quick. I'm going to hit escape so I don't have it highlighted. I'm going to change my current layer to be layer 0. I am off on the right hand side just going to draw a line that basically is represented at 14 feet. Now, mind you, before I do anything, I am not drawing with my ortho mode on, so I probably want to turn it on and I probably want to move in the direction I want to draw, which is to the right, so 14 foot 3 is the distance to that line on the floor plan, which again is the edge to the cantilever shelf. And I'm going to move this line at its midpoint to the midpoint on top of the other line. But because the other line I know is longer, you didn't know that, but I know that, I'm just going to go ahead and delete it. So if I just back it up a little, zoom out a little bit, and if I distance this, I'm dealing with a line, an object, that is 14 foot 3 inches. This should help me in the next couple steps. Okay, what do I mean by that? Well, my next dimensions is basically calling out um, 2 foot 6 and 3 feet. The, the dimension I'm missing though is the depth of that arced wall, which is 4 inches. So what I have drawn, this line, I'm going to offset this 4 inches, then I'm going to offset it 2 foot 6, and then I'm going to offset it 3 feet. And I'll show you how you put the whole thing together. So again, I'm kind of not drawing from scratch. I'm using what's already in my floor plan, generic or not, high design, not, um, and literally kind of referencing off of it. And it's, the, I think, the quickest way to work. And I, I think you're going to find that over and over and over again. So again, I'm going to offset 4 inches, and you're going to, again, offset that south. And then, and, and oh gosh, I could have stayed there, but I accidentally escaped out. But if I hit enter, I'm right back into the command again. This distance needs to be two foot six. So again, type it in, 
and again select your object select the side you're copying on so again I'm moving south and then again I can basically uh, enter in the command get back into the command my last distance here is three feet which basically is the edge to the desk which I do not have drawn yet so again if I think in any way I don't have uh, the correct dimensions grab your distance tool double check the five feet double check the two foot six double check the three feet and on and on and on and on and on okay so from here then it's a matter of okay these are all drawn on layer zero so I think the first thing that I should do is change these all uh, to the proper layer and very much like I've shown you in class if you type the properties command which is just PRO um, and and bring that up literally to use it what will happen is the property command is actually a properties window uh, this palette that's floating on my left hand side I never work in AutoCAD without this thing up. So you could see immediately I have these lines selected, they're blue, um, the vertices that are being shown in the blue uh, highlighted um, uh, squares. That's how I know my object is selected. Um, it is on layer zero. And these uh, mostly, actually uh, two of them are walls, two of them are casework. So really, let's be precise. Um, this is supposed to be the wall. Actually, you know what? I take that back. These are going to be erased. We're going to take all four of these, my first original tent, and I'm going to change these to the casework layer, which is a floor case, just like that. Bam, simple. Okay, and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw an arc, because it's time, three-point arc, and I'm going to draw a three-point arc from this end point here, because again, this is where the arc should be. So it, the first point of the arc is this end point, second point is uh, up north, it's midpoint where the intersection of that horizontal line and center line meet, and then the end point is that piece right there. Now it's white because I'm on the layer zero. That's the other thing. I forgot to change my current layer. Now my current layer is changed. Wonderful. However, this is in casework. It is obviously a wall. <laughs> so really, I should have changed it to a wall full new. Sorry guys, it's Friday afternoon. Um, but there it is. And so again, let me change my current layer one more time to a, a wall full because I'm going to make a, a couple adjustments. Um, again, this is our wall. I'm going to offset that four inches, uh, which I am not. Uh, it's not the default setting. So I'm going to offset it. And again, I'm moving south. And then literally, I do not need these two lines. Uh, at one time, literally one minute ago, two minutes ago, um, they represented where my starting point was, but um, obviously we know our wall is curvilinear, so I can erase that. And if I zoom in to these corner areas, now I can start to clean things up. This is the correct layer for the cantilevered shelf. It's the uh, casework um, layer, and this is the correct layers for that wall, which is not complete yet but I need to trim some things out, clean some things up uh, in AutoCAD. So I'm gonna trim this little line here. I am with my current layer on, which is correct. I am gonna draw a line and a line there. And I'm gonna do the same thing on the other side. So again, trim. And again, I'm gonna draw a line and point to end point. And again, you have a lot of constraints being thrown at you. You guys can see um, I'm being told ortho is on, I'm given a degree, and I'm given a distance. Uh, these are what are called constraints. Um, once you get used to the constraints, which happens all at the bottom of your interface called dynamic input. If you do not see this button dynamic input at the bottom of your interface, you just go to the far, far right, bottom right hand corner in AutoCAD, and you select it which brings up this pop-up window. Um, this is um, right at the top. It's a what, sixth from the top, literally, um, but it's really important. It's a, what allows you to see the flag of the command line and what have you. So uh, to kind of repeat myself, so even on the floor plan that I called out with the edge here listed at 14.3, I have trimmed that down because I can't keep that 14.3 with keeping a depth of two foot six for that cantilevered shelf. Um, I probably should change the cantilevered shelf with the depth of um, more like two feet, um, but that's okay. Literally, like that's for another day. Actually, that's for class. We'll, we'll edit that in class, I'll remember. Okay, so moving on to the desk. So again, this is an object that really is just a guide for us. So when I look at the desk, 
literally right there. Um, I don't have any dimensions on this one, but I do have dimensions on this one. Um, if I zoom in, you guys can see the overall desk's length is seven foot eight. The depth of it is three foot four. That's exactly what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna do exactly what I did a little bit earlier. I'm gonna draw off on the side on the proper layer. So let me change my layer to a floor case. I'm gonna select a rectangle. I am going to draw a rectangle, so I'm going to start the rectangle, and I'm going to basically type in the at symbol, and it's x comma y. So in this case, x is the length of the desk, y is the depth of the desk. So the length of the desk is seven foot eight, comma, because that's x axis. Y axis here is three foot four. Hit enter, and then this is where I'll just move. M is move. I will select the object, enter it in, right click on the mouse to enter in commands. I will select the midpoint of the desk and I will place it at the midpoint of the intersection of that horizontal line and center line. And then this is where we just do not need this guide anymore. So we could just hit erase. And then what we have here is if we look on back um, in that handout. So again, the, the rough handout, we have this dashed rounded rectangle, if you will. Um, I don't give any distance to it, you don't really know anything about it, um, but basically we're going to take this rectangle and we are going to offset it six inches to the interior. So offset can be used in many ways, right? We've mostly used it to create all of our walls, but in this case we're working with a piece of furniture. Um, well, actually in this case we're working with a piece of millwork because this would be custom uh, created, fabricated. Um, so we're going to say offset here. We're going to give six inches because I'm telling you it's six inches, of course. Sorry, but there's no distance listed. And then literally, I want that distance or the offset object to obviously be on the interior of the desk because that's why it's dashed. It's dashed to show us that it's underneath the desk, which is true. Um, it is not rounded in corners uh, because I haven't shown you how to do this yet. Um, and this is the wonderful fillet command. Um, if you type fillet, uh, which we know it as fillet, but in AutoCAD world, um, in language and terminology, it is fillet. <laughs> I almost said fillet, sorry. Um, so fillet, when you use it, first thing that you're going to want to tell it <clears throat> is the radius that you want. So if you move your cursor right on top of the word, or if you type the letter that's blue, so if I just typed R, um, I find lately I, I'm using these buttons more and more and more because it's just nice and convenient and interactive. Um, and I'm going to give it six inches, so just six, enter. And if you go back, you can select polyline, and then you can select the polyline and bam, bam, it will automatically curve those corners for you. Now, of course, the long way would be me exploding the rectangle, getting four separate lines, you know, and then literally then fill it in with a radius of six inches, but that's ridiculous because we have an option for a polyline. Um, so with that said, that is, in a nutshell, the casework um, and, and the, you know, curved, um, wall, if you will. And then one last thing, I, I have not saved the whole time, not good, control S should be constantly, you know, every two minutes, five minutes, save, 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 save. Um, I did call out one more thing that I didn't make clear. Um, these walls here are all full height. This curved wall is actually partial height. So what does that mean? That means in my layers, I should not just have one layer representing my wall. Um, if I go here to new layer, I should clearly also have a wall that's not full. It's PRHT for partial height, and it is a new wall. And um, I'm going to still keep it um, on the same color reference of cyan, and then we'll get more in detail with that with uh, class, if we add some hatching and what have you. Um, but again, you're not going to notice a difference in color, but as I zoom in and select those three objects, I'm going to change the layer. And then do not forget about the fourth object right there that you also want to change to the new layer. Okay, so I hope you found this video helpful. I hope this video is less than 10 minutes. Something tells me it's between 10 and 15. Um, but if you have any comments or questions, uh, I, by all means, you can write them in, uh, in the comment section um, or you guys can email me. Uh, thank you very much and I will see and talk to you soon. Ciao.